Have you ever dared to stare into a mirror in the pitch black chanting Bloody Mary three times? This is the chilling dare of the Bloody Mary game, an urban legend that has been the stuff of sleepovers and parties for generations. With a mirror, darkness, and a chant, they say you can summon a vengeful spirit. Now imagine a group of friends eager for a thrill, testing the legend themselves. Well, here's a story about just that. And let's just say they got more than they bargained for. A dare, they thought it was, an innocent game to spice up their boring night. A group of friends huddled together in the dimly lit room, their laughter echoing through the silence of the night. Their usual Saturday night hangouts had become predictable. The same old stories, the same old jokes, and the same old movies. They craved something different, something exciting, something that would make their hearts race. That's when one of them, the most adventurous of the lot, proposed the dare. A dare to play the Bloody Mary game. You've probably heard of it. A game that's been around for years, whispered about in hushed tones at sleepovers, and dismissed as nothing more than an urban legend. The rules are simple. Chant Bloody Mary's name three times in front of a mirror, in a dark room, and she's supposed to appear. The friends exchanged skeptical glances. Some laughed it off, dismissing it as a childish prank. Others, though, were intrigued. The thrill of the unknown, the allure of the forbidden, it was enticing. Despite their disbelief and skepticism, they decided to play along. After all, it was just a game, right? As they prepared for the game, the atmosphere began to shift. The laughter that once filled the room was replaced with an eerie silence. There was a chill in the air, a sense of foreboding that they couldn't quite shake off. Their hearts pounded in their chests, their breaths came out in shaky gasps, and their palms were slick with sweat. But they pushed through, their curiosity overpowering their fear. They gathered in the bathroom, their faces pale in the flickering candlelight. The mirror, usually a mundane object, now seemed ominous, almost threatening. They took a deep breath, their eyes locked on their reflections. As they began to chant Bloody Mary's name, the suspense was palpable. It hung heavy in the room like a cloud ready to burst. And then the bathroom light switched off. Their hearts pounded like a drum in their chests. But this was just the beginning. The real terror was yet to come. In the darkness, their voices trembled, reciting the chilling incantation. The words, Bloody Mary, echoed around the room, bouncing off the bare walls, amplifying their fear. Each utterance of the name was a dare to the unknown, a challenge to the unseen. There was a palpable tension hanging in the room, as thick and heavy as the darkness that enveloped them. Their hearts pounded like wild drums in their chests, their breaths hitched, their palms were slick with cold sweat. The friends, once so full of bravado, now fell silent, their nervous giggles and whispered reassurances slowly fading away. The laughter had been their armor, their shield against the unknown, but now, even the echoes of their mirth seemed to have been swallowed by the overwhelming silence. As they stared into the mirror, they felt the temperature in the room drop, a bone-chilling cold creeping up their spines like an icy specter. It was as if the room itself was holding its breath, waiting for something or someone to answer their call. The silence was deafening, consuming, wrapping around them like a shroud. It was a silence that wasn't just a lack of noise, but a silence that seemed to have a life of its own. It was creeping, crawling, slithering through the room, whispering in their ears, playing tricks on their minds. Their breaths fogged up in the cold air, the uneasy quiet punctuated only by the soft rustling of their clothes and the ragged inhales and exhales of their breaths. The room was now a sanctuary of suspense, a cathedral of fear. It was as if the very air had thickened, their surroundings pressing in on them, suffocating them. And then, they felt it. An unseen presence, a phantom touch, a spectral whisper. It was as if the room had come alive, the walls breathing, the floor pulsating. It was a feeling that seeped into their bones, a dread that gripped their hearts, a terror that rendered them speechless. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. The words hung in the air like an unfinished sentence. The friends stood, frozen, their faces pale, their eyes wide. They had summoned something, something that thrived in the darkness, something that fed on their fear. A gasp, a scream, and then chaos. In the heart of the darkness, an unseen terror gripped the group of friends, a cold, cruel presence that seemed to fill the room seeping into every corner, every crevice. It was as if the air itself had turned against them, thick with dread and fear. 
With a frantic scramble, they lunged for the light switch, their hands slipping and sliding over the cold porcelain of the bathroom walls. But the switch offered no solace. It was as lifeless as the dead of night, refusing to yield to their desperate pleas for light. The stark realization hit them like a cold wave. They were trapped. Panic, like wildfire, spread through their veins, their hearts pounding like drums in their chests. Their screams, raw and primal, echoed off the bathroom tiles, bouncing back at them in a cruel parody of their terror. The darkness was alive, feeding off their fear, growing stronger with every passing second. Desperate, they clawed at the locked bathroom door, their nails scraping against the wood. The door seemed to mock their efforts, standing resolute and immovable. It was as if the house itself was in league with the darkness, holding them captive in the heart of the terror. The air grew colder, the pressure building until it was almost unbearable. It was as if they were underwater, drowning in the darkness. Their lungs ached for air, their eyes stung with unshed tears. They were helpless, at the mercy of the unseen terror. But then, a sliver of hope. The door, once so steadfast, began to give way under their relentless assault. With one final desperate push, it swung open, releasing them from their dark prison. The relief was palpable, a physical entity in the room. They were free. But as they stumbled out into the hallway, gasping for breath, they realized a chilling truth. Finally, the door swung open, releasing them from the dark prison. But they weren't alone. They thought they had escaped, but the real horror had just begun. The relief they felt was now a distant memory, replaced with a chilling dread that seemed to seep into every corner of their lives. The friends, once jovial and carefree, were now shadows of their former selves. A haunting reality had set in, one that was far more terrifying than any ghost story they had ever heard. Every mirror they encountered seemed to shatter of its own accord, as though recoiling from their reflection. It was as though the world itself was reminding them of their folly, the consequences of their reckless dare. The cracking of the mirrors echoed the fracturing of their sanity, each splintered shard a testament to their mounting fear. In the quiet corners of their homes, they noticed shadows shifting, a darkness that moved of its own volition. It was as though they were never alone, a constant companion lurking just out of sight. An unrelenting paranoia took hold. Every flicker of light, every creak of a floorboard, a terrifying reminder of the terror they had summoned. Whispers filled the silence of the night, a chilling symphony of ghostly voices. The name Bloody Mary seemed to reverberate through the quiet and eerie mantra that echoed in their minds. Their hearts beat in time with this spectral chorus, a haunting melody that underscored their every waking moment. The suspense was unbearable, the tension palpable. They sought a way to end this torment, to banish the specter they had so foolishly invoked. They delved into ancient texts, consulted mediums, even tried to replicate the ritual in hopes of reversing its effects. But each attempt was met with failure, the haunting only intensified. As the days turned into weeks, their desperation grew. They were trapped in their own nightmare, a chilling reality from which there seemed to be no escape. Their laughter had turned to screams, their camaraderie to isolation. The horror of their situation was inescapable. They realized too late that some legends are better left untested. In their quest for a thrill, they had invited an uninvited guest. The friends, now victims of their own daring, sought help. They turned to the wisdom of those who understood the supernatural, those who knew how to banish the specter of Bloody Mary. They found themselves standing once again before the mirror, the very portal through which they had summoned their terror. But this time they came armed with knowledge, their hearts filled with a desperate hope. They confronted the entity, their voices trembling yet resolute. It was a terrifying encounter, a battle of wills between the living and the undead, between the audacious and the vengeful. In the end, they prevailed. The haunting eyes and bloodied visage of Bloody Mary disappeared from the mirror, leaving behind only their own terrified reflections. They breathed a sigh of relief, a sigh that echoed in the silence of the room. They had managed to banish Bloody Mary, or so they thought. The story concludes with a stark warning. There are things in this world that should not be toyed with, forces that should not be trifled with, because once you open certain doors, you can never fully close them again. And so, they learned a chilling lesson that some doors, once opened, can never be fully closed. The friends were forever marked by their encounter, 
a haunting reminder of their reckless dalliance with the supernatural. 